Gold has value, but jade is priceless. This is the belief that has been held about jade in China for thousands of years. One Chinese writer even described jade as poetry without words. An emperor was said to have offered 15 cities for a piece of jade small enough to fit in the palm of his hand. As old as China's recorded history, jade has been found in ancient tombs dating back possibly as far as 8,000 years ago. Welcome back to Jewels of the Trade. This is the story of jade in China. Hey everyone, and thank you for watching my video on the history of jadeite and nephrite. This is part one in our History of Jade series. Please take a quick second to subscribe so that you don't miss out on more videos like this. Be sure to like this video if it's what you're looking for and follow Jewels of the Trade on Pinterest. One of my favorite stories about Jade in China is an account of naked maidens wading through rivers and streams at night, trying to call the Jade to them, intending to attract the male, Yang, Jade energy to their female, Yin energy. Sounds wild, but in all likelihood, people probably did prospect for alluvial Jade in the water. Ancient mining and jade hunting in what is now Turkestan supplied the Chinese peoples and nobility with nephrite jade for relics, tools, weapons, and more for much of Chinese history. It is even believed by some historians that China had a jade age, like a bronze age or an iron age, where jade was used in place of these metals. We don't know when exactly China first started using jade, but we do know they never stopped. Jade carving was a huge part of ritual and decor before the Chu dynasty and has been found in a lot of Shang tombs as well. Knives, ornaments, and utensils of jade buried with the dead. The jade now known for its reverence in ancient China is called nephrite jade, but it was said that China had four great jades, including nephrite, turquoise, serpentine, and a rock composed mainly of a northite and zoocyte known as Dushan jade. But wait, wait, wait! What about jadeite jade? You know, one of the most valuable gemstones in the world, known for its vivid green color that we call imperial jade. The jade that has captivated Chinese demand for the past, I don't know, 100 years or so? It's time to talk about Emperor Qianlong. But before we discuss every jade lover's favorite crazy man, if you are looking for natural, untreated jadeite jade jewelry, ask your local jeweler about Mason and K Jade, the leading supplier of natural jadeite jade jewelry in the United States, also offering testing and valuing services in-house. Your local jeweler can offer you warranties, appraisals, repairs, and everything else you need to protect your heirloom piece of jewelry, and they can source natural jade from Mason K. If your local jeweler does not sell natural jade, you can buy from Mason K Jade directly at mkjjewelry.com, and you can even use the discount code JOT for 10% off. Back to the good stuff. Qing Emperor Qianlong believed his jade was alive, as many people did and still do today. He believed it had miraculous powers. He believed it was the key to immortality. Like many young, powerful men, Qianlong fell in love. He took a wife named Fu Ka and was mesmerized by her beauty enchanted. But this love story would end in tragedy. Her unexpected death in 1748 was earth-shattering for the young emperor. His pain was unbearable as he isolated himself day after day in his grief, refusing his concubines and lavish meals prepared by his staff. What was he doing locked away in his room? Chipping the letters of heartbroken poetry into Jade's stone. Depressed and hopeless, his infatuation with Jade only grew. Soon he was sleeping in a Jade bed. He was brushing his hair with the jade hairbrush. He had a jade pillow. He was drinking from jade cups. His fixation became a dangerous obsession. Defiling ancient jade bowls and carvings, Qianlong carved his poetry into every jade stone he could get his hands on. Up to this point, we presume a lot of these jades were nephrite and serpentine. He consumed all of the jades at his disposal and longed for more. And then he heard of a vivid green stone, a rare gem that appeared to glow as if lit by a flame, Fei Choi, better known today as Burmese Jadeite Jade. Hyper-focused on finding this mysterious source, he utilized every book, every map, every staff member available to him in search of the mines. When he finally thought he found it, it was time to mobilize the troops. Tens of thousands of Imperial soldiers marched to their death in search of Fei Choi for the emperor. After a long campaign, the Chinese troops returned to the emperor's palace, defeated by disease, 
terrain in the Kachin warriors. All they had to show for their efforts were two small green gemstones. Bei Choi. This was the end of Qian Long's pursuit for Burmese jade, and Qian Long being 74 at the time didn't live long after. Qian Long's love story ended in tragedy twice. The loss of his beloved wife and having never found the rare green gem he spent many years and countless lives looking for. We always say the tale of jade is a love story, as Shakespearean as it may seem. So what happened next? How did Burmese jadeite come to be the most popular jade and jewelry today? Like pieces sell for millions of dollars. I think at this time, the second highest per carat gemstone sale ever was jade. It was like $3.3 million a carat or something insane like that. 2.2, 3.3. Somebody correct me, let me know in the comments. It's valuable is what I'm saying. Jade's a big deal. So what happened? Be sure to watch part two where we discuss Empress Chi Chi and her obsession with Jade and power. And leave me a comment with your opinion on Qian Long. Was he simply born with a silver spoon and unqualified to handle the responsibility he was given? Or was it something more than that? Something darker? Don't forget to follow Jewels of the Trade on Pinterest and buy Jade Jewelry from Mason K with my discount code JOT. 